Duke Nukem Forever is a game that's been long waited for and longed for by many gamers. Considered vaporware for over 10 years, it's finally popped up as a completely finished product this year 2011. But can a game that's been waited for and wanted and bet on by many gamers for over 10 years truly live up to such astronomically amazing standards? We're gonna find out, Rock Cock 64 style. As expected from the Duke Nukem franchise, Duke Nukem Forever is a cover-based first-person shooter, very similar to the likes of Call of Duty in the type. By cover-based, I mean you have to take cover to protect yourself from shots, and then take counter shots back at your enemies. It's very similar to Duke Nukem 3D this way, as the original Duke Nukem 3D played out very similar to what we now consider modern first-person shooters. It's quite remarkable how similar Duke Nukem Forever plays to the original Duke Nukem 3D. I'll show you some examples. Early in the game, you come up to a segment where you get to stand in one place and watch some monitors as people talk to you and tell you things. This was a very enjoyable segment, and it really immersed me in the game's story, which is very important for a Duke Nukem-style first-person shooter. It's very reminiscent of a scene in the original Duke Nukem 3D as well. In this scene from Duke Nukem 3D, Episode 2, you also had to stand in one place and listen to some guy talk to you on a computer monitor. Just like it. Hold on a second. There's a pretty funny joke coming up right here. I just gotta turn on my Duke vision. Th there it is! The cake is alive. Oh, that's so funny. I've never even played Portal. Oh, gosh. Okay, wait, I was reviewing a game. In this other scene from Duke Nukem Forever, you're stopped by a man and his son who want to ask you for an autograph. Once again, it's another scene that you can't skip, but why would you want to? It's so well programmed and scripted that it's something you have to enjoy. It's also reminiscent of another scene in Duke Nukem 3D, where a very similar thing happens. The game follows suit from Duke Nukem 3D by making sure to never give you more enemies than you can handle. Two or three enemies is the most you'll ever face. And if they give you more, they'll make sure you have a turret, just like in Duke Nukem 3D. I could go on about the driving segments and all the other parts of the game reminiscent of Duke Nukem 3D, but I'd be going on for a while. All you need to get from this is that Duke Nukem Forever made sure to capitalize on all the parts of Duke Nukem 3D that made it the successful game it was, including the linear point A to point B map design. You'll never get lost in Duke Nukem Forever. You're always going from one place to the other with no room to explore or to find secrets. It's very helpful to have everything laid out in front of you so you know exactly what you're doing. No room to think the wrong thing. This game thinks for you. Um, I don't know why that... Maybe that's a screenshot from an early game? Otherwise, I don't know why that would be so pixelated. Y yeah, okay, yeah. I'm a professional game reviewer. On the subject of graphics, Duke Nukem Forever looks beautiful. It's all bump mapped and shiny and uses all the latest shaders you'd expect in a top of the line triple A gaming title. Designed for six year old hardware. It looks just like an Xbox 360 game. Here's another new feature that Duke Nukem adds that I believe is a first for gaming in general. I wasn't sure what to call it at first, but now I've decided on the physics seesaw puzzle. It's pretty cool, and I've never seen it done in games before. It's a brand new concept. Eight years ago. The game also has many realistic surprises. Duke Nukem only has two arms, so in turn, he can only carry two guns. It's a very nice touch by Gearbox, and it really adds to the game's immersion. Now, I could keep going on and on about all the praises I have for this game, but with all that said, the game also does have some minor flaws that do get in the way of enjoyment, which I will cover in this review. One confusing change in Duke Nukem Forever 
is how they completely turned around Duke's attitude towards the ladies. In the original Duke Nukem 3D, Duke was quite the ladies man and very respectful. When Duke Nukem Forever, he's a crude perverted sex addict who gets lewd acts performed on him by twins. It's really confusing if you remember his character in Duke Nukem 3D. The entire third act of Duke Nukem 3D was spent romancing and respectfully pursuing this lovely young lady. You had to do such things as taking her out to a romantic comedy and playing intellectually stimulating games like pool. And who can forget the last map where Duke takes her out to dinner and has to come to terms with the fact that she needs to put her career first right now. But in Duke Nukem Forever, we just get this. I, for one, am super offended to see this misogynist, sexist behavior in my ultra-violent murder simulator. The last thing I have to complain about Duke Nukem Forever is the community. No doubt if you were to take this game online, you'd run into quite a few fat autistic nerds who try to live vicariously through Duke Nukem, but in reality are just fat autistic nerds. Overall. Duke Nukem Forever is the absolute best FPS I've played all year. I have to give props to 3D Realms and Activision for the incredible job they've done here. If you have a computer or a GameCube, you owe it to yourself to pick this one up.